Welcome to Daily Armor. We'll be in several scriptures today. Um, be ready to flip and flop your Bible a little bit. Um, got some serious things uh, to go over. And the first is being um, a friend, but then being betrayed. And we see that all through the scriptures where that would happen. Um, and when I'm studying this week, of course, I've been studying um, this week about seeing the Lord in the Old Testament, seeing Jesus in the Old Testament, and then knowing those prophecies, those uh, things actually came to pass, actually were fulfilled. And um, I ran across Psalms 41.9. If we want to turn there, <clears throat> we'll be in Psalms 41.9 to begin with, but we will be in several scriptures, Lord willing. Um, I don't know exactly how far that he'll let me get, but um, we'll begin in Psalms 41 and verse number 9. <clears throat> let me find my place again here. I've been all over the place. Um, this is what Psalms 41 9 says. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Um, when I looked up that in my, um, my, my margin, there was a whole slew of scriptures that were there that were giving some examples of this happening. And I wrote them all down and I looked them all up and was reading the accounts, most of which I had read and studied before and which will probably be familiar to you as well. Um, but when we're thinking about then reading this verse as uh, and and knowing that this did come to pass, Jesus did experience this, um, and we we see that we'll see that in a little while in the New Testament where it actually came to pass. But yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel, and I think about him being the bread of life. And talking about this friend who was taken of the bread of life, I think about myself, um, that I have received him as my Savior. But I also realize the rest of this verse with says, which hath lifted or hath lifted up his heel against me. Um, and then that begs to question, um, what, in what ways have I failed him? In what ways um, do I let him down? In what ways have I lifted up my heel against him? And uh, I look in the lives of some of, uh, of, some of these accounts um, that happened with several relationships. Um, the first of all, the first one I want to go to is in 2 Samuel. So if you'll back up in your Old Testament to 2 Samuel and look at ver chapter number 15 in 2 Samuel 15 and verse number 12. And as we know that, um, you know, we have, if we've partaken of the bread, Jesus is the bread of life. If you're saved, then you have taken of his bread and you are a friend. He is your friend. Um, but so many times, he's never failed me, ever, had, never, ever has he failed me. But I have failed him so many times and in so many ways. And um, here recently, it's just, you know, overloading me with, um, some failures and and some temptations that are out there, some um, lusts of flesh that are out there. There's there's so many things. Um, the um, uh, false security um, that I, where I put it in um, the wrong things, and I, I realize that, and I see that, and I have to repent and turn of that. But um, I know I'm kind of being all jumbled this morning. It's been um, uh, very a very long couple of days and um i feel like that i i have failed the lord um in some areas in my life and i know things can be different i does i have to stay that way and i want us to look at second samuel 15 and verse number 12 and it says an absalom sent for ahithophel the gilonite david's counselor from his city even from gila while he offered sacrifices now i know that probably doesn't make any sense to you just to pull it out there about absalom sending for ahithophel and why that would be in the margin of my bible talking about um 
the Lord's uh, friend deceived, you know, a, a heel being raised up against him from a friend. Um, but I want to add that Absalom here is seeking Ahithophel because Absalom is David's, the King David's son. And Ahithophel got so upset with his dad um, and he didn't, he didn't deal with it. And so it ended up being that Ahithophel decided to um, try to take the throne from David and caused a revolt. Ahithophel now is a close friend and close counselor to King David. And so now there's some things that he left undone, that he had some bitterness that he that was left um, undealt with. And he has now joined forces with Absalom. So this is a son and this is a this is a close friend that are joining forces against the king. Um, and, and we don't want to be um, that child of the king. We don't want to be that friend of the king that turns our back. But yet so many times in our actions or our lack of actions that we in turn are, are, are saying that that's what we're doing. That's not what we're meaning to do, but that is in sense what we're doing. And that's how that Jesus is receiving it. He's receiving it as if a son or a f close friend, um, a child or a close friend has raised up a heel against them and, and revolting against him because we we want to wait on being obedient or we want to um, not have the right attitude as far as um, what God wants us to do and what he doesn't want us to do. And we want to um, get those things right with the Lord. And I look at these situations and I think, how could it have been different? And I feel like that it could have been different with Absalom. Um, he did have, it was, it was a big issue back when um, what he got upset over, it was a huge, huge, big issue. And I won't get into all that this morning because that's a whole nother um, set of lessons. But um, Absalom was so upset with his dad about some things and he let that stew and stew and stew and stew instead of going to his dad and saying, let's, uh, you know, let's come up with a solution. Let's come up with um, what needs to happen. And for, um, for both parties to have been satisfied with the results, we have Ahithophel who harbored resentment. And, and I would say in both these situations, Absalom and Ahithophel, there was some valid, that they were valid things that happened. They were um, some very horrible things that happened and they just needed to put closure to it. They just needed um, to not let it stew and to create bitterness and lead them to be um, end up being deceitful. Um, and I think these situations could have been different. I look at also in the book of Job, um, if we go um, back now the other direction to the book of Job and look at um, his how Job felt, how Job was treated. Job was um, um, not treated very well by his friends because they did not understand what all he was going through um, and that it was not, um, as they assumed, it was some kind of punishment from God. Um, and then we know, reading the story, they don't know because they were in, you know, in the midst of be, being the story, um, but that he was betrayed by his friends and Jesus has, has been betrayed by his friends. Um, and verse number, uh, chapter 19, verse number 13 says, He hath put my brethren far from me and mine acquaintance are verily, verily estranged from me. So Job was feeling that, that exclusion. That was, he was feeling that humiliation and he was feeling that betrayal. And Jesus in Psalms 41, 9 experienced that. Um, and he actually experienced that. Um, a good reference for that is in John chapter 13 and we'll be there in a, in a few minutes. But um, how could the story have been different? How could it have been different? The friends, um, we can't always assume that when somebody is going through something bad that they're being punished by God. Um, we don't understand why we go through things and why others go through things. We don't understand what's going on. But we could be a part of the story that is different than what this than the story that Job experienced. We want to be, um, we want to be different than we want to learn by example by these examples by Absalom by Ahithophel by Job's friends. We want to learn by example. Um, 
I want to skip on down to some of the other, I'm not going to, I'm going to skip over some of the other scriptures I've got wrote down. And let's go ahead and go to that John chapter 13. I want to explain what I mean when we take into that account of Psalms 41, 9. And I want to explain um, that this is exactly what Jesus went through. What is foretold here in Psalms 41, 9 actually took place um, and was uh, experienced um, and was quoted um, as Jesus saying, so we've got, you've still got your place maybe at Psalms 41, 9, and then we go to John chapter 13 to read the account of it taking place. Um, John chapter 13, let me find my chapter here. I've got John. Um, John chapter 13, and we've got verse number um, 18, um, and it says, uh, I speak, and then this is this is the Lord preparing for his betrayal, so he knows um, what Judas has been going through. Judas, um, being with Jesus so much, had the opportunity to talk with him, um, but he says here in verse number 18, I speak not of you all, I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. That's exactly what was said about Psalms um, 41, 9. Um, I will say unto God, uh, see, 41, 9, sorry, wrong verse. Um, yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. So this is somebody that Jesus it was foretold that was going to be experienced by Jesus, and we see that it actually was experienced by Jesus. Now, my question for myself and my question for you is, are we going to, are we going to be a Judas? Um, are we going to be a friend of the Lord? Are we going to be that Christian that, um, that betrays him, that lifts up a hill against him? That is that person used as a traitor. Are we going to be that kind of Christian? And Judas's story played out and it didn't end well, but it could have been different. And I was pondering this morning, uh, what would that have looked like? What would Judas's story have looked like? Um, what could my story look like when I mess up? Um, when I, you know, um, do do something or not do something, whatever the case may be. There are so many scenarios. I'm not even going to share. Um, and I'm not even going to share what's, what the Lord's doing in my life and what's, what's going on inside of me. Um, first of all, it's private. Second of all, um, I want you to understand it's any kind of situation that you can even ponder, even kind of think of, um, where we could betray the Lord in. Um, even in a, uh, something that he wants us to do that we just, we just don't want to do it. We're just going to say we refuse. I remember back when the pastor um, was being led to move um, our family from North Carolina to Florida. And one of our really, really um, good pastor friends, preacher friends, was a pastor as well. Um, he told Todd, he said, Todd, I just would tell the Lord no, that I'm not going to Florida. I would not, I would not go. Um, and that was, he was saying that out of... Um, out of love for us because he didn't want us to move, um, out of, um, you know, uh, of, of being hurt and, and the loss of a friend moving away. And, and it was out of that, that he made that comment, but he still made the comment. I would just tell the Lord, no. Well, if the, if Todd, if Todd would have told the, told the Lord, no, then that would be what Judas, it would be a betrayal. It would be that that raising a hill up against the Lord for him to do that. And so um, he chose to be obedient um, in spite of what he wanted to do, uh, which was certainly not to move to Florida, but he chose to be obedient. And how many times in my life and in your life do we know what we're supposed to do, but yet we don't do it? We are raising up a hill against the Lord when we do that. And I don't want to be found guilty of that. But when I'm found guilty of that, and when you're found guilty of that, we cannot, We our story doesn't have to end like Judas. It doesn't have to just be over and done, but it can, it, we can change how the ending goes. Um, we know that for Judas, um, he did follow through and betray the Lord. Um, he did follow through um, and accept um, a bribe, but he also was so devastated by what he had done that he took his own life. And, but his story didn't have to end that way. He did not have to end that way. First of all, um, and this is what I'm doing in my life, 
He can talk to the Lord about it instead of trying to avoid it, instead of trying to ignore it. He could talk to the Lord about it. And he could have talked to the Lord about it before. So he, see Judas, um, and I'm not sure where the scripture was. Um, uh, I can't remember if it was in Matthew, but I, I read it this morning. It said Judas Iscariot went to the Pharisees. He went to talk to them. When the who was he? Who should he have talking to, talk had talked to? He should have talked to Jesus. He should have shared with Jesus what was going on. Jesus knew. God knows, but we have to be the ones to stop and go to him and talk to him about it and let him know and, and let him know that we don't know how to handle our feelings. We don't know how to handle, um, you know, what when the flesh is pulling so hard that we need him and we need his strength because our strength is so weak. But he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop there and talk to the Lord. He goes on, he talks to the Pharisees and then he accepts a bribe and they lay out a plan for Jesus to be betrayed. And Jesus washes his feet, breaks bread with him, literally breaks bread with him. And then he goes to betray the Lord, which is exactly what happened here in um, John chapter 13. And I'll say that at, even at that point, Judas could have asked for forgiveness. Whenever he betrayed the Lord, if he could have just waited. And so many times... We have we think that we have so messed up that we just want to we just want to say we're done that we're not gonna I'm not gonna go back to church anymore I'm not gonna do this Bible study anymore I'm not gonna um, pray about these things anymore because I've so messed up and and you know why would the Lord ever want to use me why would the Lord ever want to forgive me but the story could be different Judas's story could have been different. We could have been looking at a wonderful, wonderful story of redemption. We see that in the life of Peter. Peter betrayed the Lord. He denied him three times. The Lord warned him that he would. He was boastful and said, Lord, I'll never do that. I will never do that. And for those of you that are saying, I've never betrayed the Lord. Well, I'm sorry, but you probably have. You probably let him down because we all fall and we all fail. And I'm just being honest this morning um, even in my honesty, just, you know, me and some glasses and, and no hair, no makeup, just coming to you just, just as pure and real as I can be this morning, letting you know that I, I mess up all the time and I don't want to be that Judas that doesn't seek the Lord and ask for forgiveness. I don't want to be the Judas that just gives up and, and doesn't want to wait. I want to wait on him um, I want, you know, at the time that the betrayal took place, Jesus was taken into custody. Um, Judas could not see the Lord. If Judas had felt that, um, want to, um, talk to Jesus, he couldn't for the, for the, for where he was. He couldn't even talk to him about it. Um, and so he took matters into his own hands and he shouldn't have done that. Um, he shouldn't have done that if he would have just waited. And so whatever you're contemplating, whether you're just wanting to get out altogether, just wait, wait on him. You, we don't, we, he's not in prison. He's not on the cross. He's not even in the tomb. He is risen and he is available to me and to you. And I'm going to him and I'm going to continue to go to him until I get these, these things that I, that are bothering me until I get them resolved. Until I get these, there's like three or four matters that are really, really, really heavy on my heart and they're bothering me and I feel weak in the flesh and I feel weak. Um, but I, I want to seek him and I want to be restored and I want to see how can my story be different? How can things be changed? Not because I'm changing it because I'm just simply allowing him to change me. And if you would simply allow him to change you, you don't have to take matters into your own hands. You don't have to um, you know, make some decisions that would be, um, that would stop your story. You can make the decision to wait on the Lord, to talk to him about it and wait on him about it. I just, I'm just pondering this morning and thinking about if Judas would have just waited and if he would have just waited a week, if he would have just waited three or four days, if he would have just waited and not taking his own life. If he would have just waited. Now it would have gotten worse before it gotten better. And sometimes it does. 
um, in Judas' account, if you if you go in your imagination with me, and if you think Judas betrayed the Lord, and then he it, he made himself sick that he did, um, if, but if he would have waited and watched, and I know it got worse before it got better because Jesus was beaten, and he carried that cross, and he was crucified, and he did that for me, and he did that for you, and he, it was part of the plan. He had to do it. It was part of the plan. And he was placed in that tomb. And I know that when, once he was placed in that tomb, it was the darkest time for those disciples. It was the darkest hours for that Mary, the mother of Jesus. It was the darkest times for her. But in three days, he rose again. And oh, how the story changed. And oh, how things were different. But And what would have been different for Judas had he waited? What if he had waited? What if he had been able to see the Lord after he was resurrected? When Jesus was seen of 500 people, what if Judas could have went to him and said, Lord, I am so messed up and I so want to repent and I know I'm not worthy of forgiveness, but Lord, please forgive me. What would have been different about Judas' life? What kind of impact could he have made on others, on others that had messed up? What kind of story could we be reading about in the scriptures had Judas just waited and sought the Lord? And I want to change my story. I want to change um, how the story ends. I want to be, I don't want to be like Judas and be a traitor, but I don't want to be like Judas either and not seek the Lord for forgiveness because I know I'm going to mess up. I know I'm going to make mistakes. I know I'm going to fail either by uh, sins of commission or sins of omission, things that I have done or things that I should have should have done. Um, either way, and there's just more for me. It's more of a um, of an attitude that um, there's some things in my life that I know that I don't have the right attitude about it, and it's really really bothering me. And I want to have that correct attitude, and I am really really to the point where I feel like that I am not making myself change my attitude and I feel like I'm raising a heel up against the Lord and that I am betraying him and that I'm becoming a traitor because I am, I, I am, I'm not forcing myself to change that attitude and I want to do that and I want to seek him and I want him to change that attitude for me. I want him to help me with that. And whatever you're going through, whatever your situation is, whatever way that you feel like you have so messed up, let the Lord change your story. Let's, I'm going to let the Lord change my story. I'm going to, I want him to change my attitude in these, in these particular areas that I'm having, that I'm struggling with. I want him to change the way I see things. And I, I don't want to be, I don't want my story to end short. Um, I want to, to, my story to make a difference in the lives of others. I want people to see Christ, not um, see bitterness or confusion or, um, or to see a bad friend. I want to be a good friend. I want to be a good friend to my friends, and I want to be a good friend to Jesus. He is my friend. He is my Father. He is my Messiah. He is my Creator. He is my everything. And how foolish is it of me to not um, take serious my faults and failures and how foolish of it is to me, is it for me if I don't seek him in all that I do? Um, if I, I want to be a, a not just a hearer of his word, but I want to be a doer of it. Um, and I want to close with this. I want us to go to James chapter number one. So flip on over in your New Testament to James chapter one. <clears throat> And we'll go down to verse number 23. It says, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. That's when I look in the mirror. Um, this is this is some ugly that I see when I look in the mirror. Um, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Um, I'm going to get up in a little while, and I'm actually going to do my hair. And I'm going to put on some makeup. And I'm going to go out and, you know, get the work done that I need to do today. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to the Lord um, raw and fresh. But I don't intend on staying in that weakened condition. I know that he is going to forgive me because he's faithful and just. 
uh, I don't want to leave the mirror looking like this. I want to be, I want to change, um, and I, I'm going to allow him to change me in the midst of it, and I hope that you wait on him. I hope that, that when you mess up like me, and when you feel like you've done went too far, that you don't just leave it that way, um, that you allow him to make those changes in your life, like I'm, I'm allowing him to make those changes in my life, and in changing my attitude, and um, because I don't want to be that one that betrays the Lord. I don't want to be that one that has raised up a hill against him. And I hope you don't want those same things either. So let's seek the Lord today um, and and just appreciate that he, he came uh, to be born so that he could die to save us from our sins and not just our past sins, but these present sins that we have to deal with. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again soon.